Yo, 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 what's going on guys? It's Buns. Welcome back to the Road to Gladiator. Today we're going to be doing an arena gameplay breakdown. I'm going to go back over some of the games I've played over the last couple of days and give some commentary on how the games went. Today I'm going to be looking at some games that we won to point out some areas that went well, but I'm also going to look at a few games where I feel that we made some mistakes that are easily correctable that could help us get some wins going into the future. So without further ado, let's jump into it guys. I want to talk to you guys about the importance of making adjustments in your macros and key bindings. Today I went into this game against Double Hunter Druid, and during the course of this game I realized how valuable it would be to have Shadow Step Kick 1, 2, and 3 macro for Druids opening out of stealth like that. If I am able to Shadow Step Kick that cast immediately, it would give us such a huge tempo shift in the game, and we would shut down their CC and heals received. It's also great in situations where you're off target, such as a Major or Warlock, I can immediately respond to that and kick them without dropping my frames on my main target or focus target. Here's a situation where we're fighting a double caster team, and the Boomkin's my main target, the healer is my focus target, but the mage is going for a sheep, so I use my Shadow Step Kick macro to be able to kick him and not drop my targeting of my main target or my focus target. Going back one more time, you can see the Boomkin is my main target, the Shaman is my focus target, the mage blinks, I'm able to shadow step kick to him with my macro, and not only lock his cast, but keep on my targets for the Boomkin and the Shaman. This is a matchup we played as Sub, Fire, Resto Druid going into Spreest Arms, Holy Paladin. Now our objective is to sit on the Spreest, prevent him from doing as much damage, and take advantage of the fact that he is a clothy, very squishy class, and get early cooldowns out from the Paladin. Now I'm not able to get the sap off onto the Paladin as I do get in combat from his AoE, so I do land the sap onto the Spreest to cause some early pressure for us. He ends up immediately sacking, so I go to Shadow Strike kick him. He does manage to juke my kick at the start, which gives him a little bit of momentum, but we still have a lot of pressure onto the Paladin, so we keep the momentum going. One reason why I wanted to go back and watch this clip here is I knew that I could have forced Bubble from the Paladin had I used my globals differently. I am able to land the kick here, I put a lot of stress on the Paladin, I need to be able to use a cheap shot right here, but I decided to go for damage for one global and it allows him to get that heal off. Had I had stopped him from getting that heal by forcing my cheap shot, we would have put ourselves in a situation where the Paladin probably has to bubble, and this does have an impact later into the game. We continue pressuring the priest, stopping him from getting his VTs off, as that is his main source of damage and healing. So we continue the heat on him, getting some cross CC onto the paladin. I'm able to blind off of the sheep. I'm trinketing the fear here to continue my pressure, landing full stuns into the spreeze, which forces his dispersion. So we're fairly ahead right now, and I look to get a stun onto the warrior, but we overlap it with sheep, which was a miscommunication between myself and the mage. We continue getting some pressure onto the priest at this point, trying to force more cooldowns from the paladin to be able to top his team up our druid grows for some cross cc he ends up getting hodge but they're not really forcing any serious pressure from us here keeping the pressure mounted onto the priest right now we want to force more cooldowns from this paladin the double fear goes out onto me and the resto druid so they got us in a spot where i may have to use some defensive so i use my cloak of shadows I land a full stun onto the Paladin to try to give my mage an opportunity to get a sheep off, but his ignite ends up breaking damage onto the Paladin, which stops the sheep, so I'm stunning the warrior off to try to get some pressure for him so that we can end up getting some CC again onto this Paladin. We end up putting him into an Arcane Torrent, into Cyclone, which forces the bubble. Now, had the Paladin not had the bubble available at this time, when I had the opportunity behind the pillar, we would be very ahead at this point in the game, but now, the pressure's really on, they end up fearing and overlapping silence on our druid but it forces a lot of cooldowns i end up kicking the md to stop him from coming out of block but they swap the pressure onto our resto druid who's caught out of bear in a hodge fear going on to me most of the pressure at this point has turned around and we end up just snowballing ourselves out of this game very quickly in situations like this, these are the games that I love to go back and look at what went wrong, because for the majority of the match, we had control and it very quickly snowballed out of hand. So it's just our ability to be able to peel correctly and not DR ourselves to death. So being able to land sheeps onto the warrior, kite him across the map, and have off stuns appropriately onto the Spreece and Arms Warrior, I think the next time around we can do a better job peeling to be able to give ourselves an opportunity to survive that kill window. 
And thankfully, that opportunity came very quickly as the next game we played, we ended up facing the exact same team. So making some adjustments, we realized that we need to be able to kite a little bit better, use our CCs more effectively when the warrior pushes out, and try to lock down their pushes when they're using big cooldowns like bubble, bop, and sacrifice. So I land a sap early onto the paladin, I'm getting some damage off onto this priest, I continue getting pressure, landing a resap off of my druids in position, trying to get a clone out. He is able to get the clone out, but it is sacrificed there. But we do force more cooldowns from the Paladin to get out of that clone. We do get his trinket. So we're going to try to turn this around, get some pressure onto the Paladin for a bit. Shaka, our mage right now, is line of sight and dips a little bit low, but we are able to pick him up there. Kind of a dangerous situation. I turn my attention back onto the Spreece at this point to try to stop him from getting his damage output. I don't have a kick available at this point, but I do go for an off stun onto the Holy Paladin at this point, and we are able to get a Cyclone off of that. So we have a lot of pressure right now, a fear coming out. I decide to trinket this because of our momentum. I land a half blind off of the Cyclone onto the Paladin to try to force some more pressure here. We continue damaging the Spreest. I land a off stun onto the Warrior to help us get some control. Half sheep off of that. So we have the Warrior very locked up, putting him into an entangling route after that. Paladin uses freedom on that so that the warrior can get some pressure, but we've done a good job of containing him this game. At this point, we're pushing in pretty aggressively to try to find some CC. We do land it onto the Paladin. We are able to get some damage off onto the Spree, but I'm feared here out of line of sight, so it's hard for me to get some uptime. We get a resheep onto the Paladin, following up with the Cyclone, so we're trying to end the Priest here and put as much damage onto him as possible, but he is able to get a life swap up in a little gap of CC here that I'm gonna go back, and it's very nitpicky, but I wanna show you guys this one again. Void Shift, or formerly known as Life Swap, is the final honor talent that Spreece get available to be able to swap their health with a friendly target's health, putting that person they swap with at a minimum percent of 25% health. Now one of the mechanics with void shift is that the sprees cannot void shift a target that is in cyclone. So in this situation we were able to get the cyclone off onto the paladin into a dragon's breath. We do follow it up with a cyclone but there is a fraction of a second where the sprees is able to get out of the dragon's breath and swap health with the holy paladin. Now this is being really really nitpicky but we actually had an opportunity right there and then to either win the game or really fast reaction force bubble from the paladin. As the game continues I continue putting pressure onto the paladin trying to force more cooldowns and get his bubble I'm able to land a full kidney at this point, which forces his bubble, which gives us a lot of momentum as we don't have a ton of cooldowns left for the enemy team to go through. We want to keep our pressure up on the spree, so I commit some damage into him, trying to get some pressure going on to the spree at this point. So the warrior is going on to our mage, trying to get some control for their team, but we have more cooldowns forced at this point, so I'm feeling in a pretty good situation. Now I'm trying to look for an opportunity here to get a stun onto the Paladin so that we can land some CC off this. So I continue pushing into the box, we are able to land a Sheep onto the Paladin which forces his Trinket, but we do overlap stun and Sheep, so it is a good Trinket for him. I'm feared here and we're trying to regain some pressure, so I'm looking to off stun the Warrior to relieve pressure from my Mage and continue my work onto the Spreest. Now at this point he gets freedom, so it's giving him an opportunity to kind of kite away at this point, but we have great control over the Warrior. I'm able to land a blind onto the paladin to extend our CC chain, opening up an opportunity for us to get pressure onto the priest. We're able to follow that up with a polymorph, but it does get trinketed, so we have a lot of pressure here, but we do force cooldowns from the paladin, and at this point we're going to swap onto the paladin to force some pressure here, trying to get more cooldowns and get pressure onto their healer. After we realize that the Paladin's not going to be a great opportunity for us, I go back into the Priest to keep control over the matchup. Keeping my damage very high and pressure high is really important, and not letting the Spreece get out of hand will pretty much guarantee the matchup for us, as Spreece has a very hard time getting cast off when we have two players on our team that can stop him with interrupts on our team, and we have great crowd control for the Warrior. We're able to get a Sheep onto the Paladin, which gives us an opportunity to land damage into the Priest at this point. I get feared here, but do get out of it and get a stun onto the Warrior to give us a little bit more control. As the damage keeps ramping up on the Spreece right now, we're just trying to look to stay ahead here and work through any more cooldowns that they may possibly have at this point. We're able to get a Nova onto everyone, which gives an opportunity for my mage to get some off pressure. Now, one thing that's not great, I think, in this situation is our Druid's right on top of the enemy team, which could allow them to swap 
if they do make that opportunity but we are able to get dispersion out from the priest so in this situation we weren't punished for it but it's something that we have to look forward going into the future so with dispersion out of the way we just keep pressure very high onto the priest i realize that our mage is in a pretty dangerous situation he's gonna have to block at this point our main focus is to try to give ourselves an opportunity to recover so off peeling the warrior right now and then i get my attention back onto the priest as we can finish the game here pretty quickly we have dispersed down we've gotten a lot of cooldowns from the paladin so a lot of damage going into the spree and now the paladin's having to line of sight dealing with my mage trying to pressure him to get cc we're able to land a bash onto him which gives us a great opportunity to follow up cc onto the paladin the warrior does charge and fear our druid but it wasn't enough to stop the kill and we were able to get enough pressure to land the kill on the spree I tend to always hark on the negative and things that we can improve, but this is a great example where we made some in-game adjustments and the very next matchup we were able to do a much better job with our cross CC and recognized opportunities where we could be in trouble and adjusted very quickly and we were able to beat the exact same team the next time we got them. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. We're almost two weeks into the first expansion. We've done a great job at understanding how all the individual classes work, and now we can start building on top of that and approaching the strengths and weaknesses of 3v3 compositions. This is important, though, to remember that you have to understand how each and every class works, and that will help you understand where class comps are susceptible to dying and where their strong suits are based on those individual classes. As always, guys, I will catch you guys on the next video. Keep it easy, everyone. Yo, 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 what's going on, guys? It's Buns. Welcome back to the Road to Gladiator. Today, I'm excited to announce a new portion of the series called Arena Raw Footage. And this is where I'm going to go back into games that I've played over the